This is a full length review of one of my favorite Spydercos um, and also one of my favorite higher end uh, knives. This is, as many of you probably will recognize it even before I open it, Spydercos Paramilitary 2. It's a very iconic knife and I think one of the most sought after models that Spyderco makes. Uh, considered very collectible and partially because you can get this in a variety of different blade steels and handle um, colors as well. So this particular combination though is the uh, kind of bluish purple or purplish blue, whichever way you want to say it, uh, G10 scales paired with their CPM S110V blade. Um, this color handle scale only comes with the knives that Spyderco issues in the S110V. So you can immediately know what blade steals in the knife when you see those, those handle scales. Um, so the Paramilitary 2, like I said, it's an iconic blade of Spyderco's, uh, one that a lot of fans of Spyderco really, really look, uh, look at. And uh, like I said, many people collect. This is a relatively large everyday carry knife. You're looking at an overall length on this thing um, of just under eight and a quarter inches. So you can see it fills my hand out pretty well and I do have large hands, um, but it's not too big to be used as an everyday carry knife. It's just kind of right on the edge there of, of your larger everyday carry options. The blade itself is actually a little bit under three and a half inches. So you're probably not gonna have too many issues in most states uh, with the length of the blade on that, which is nice. Um, it does come with a belt clip that is completely reversible for tip up, tip down, left or right hand carry, which is also very nice. The G10, G10 handle scales are kind of, um, very mildly textured. So you're not looking at extremely grippy. They're not going to tear up your hand or your pocket, but there's enough texture there that it gives you grip. And even if the handle were to get a little bit wet, it's not going to be super slick because you do have that texturing in the G10. Uh, so that's, that's you know, a good thing as well. One of the things I do like about the blade itself, um, aside from the steel, which we'll get into in just a minute, is this full flat grind. So you can see a flat grind is where basically the grind goes all the way from the edge, all the way to the spine of the blade. And you can see that plunge line where it goes, um, you know, deeper down here at the edge. And then it actually tapers all the way out to the very spine of the knife, where you have a little bit of a mark there where you can see where that, that grind goes all the way up. Um, so I do like the, the full flat grind that, that makes a very good slicing knife. Um, it's something that, that makes a, a, for a great slicer being able to have that flat grind the whole way up there. Um, overall this knife, just, man, there's so many good things you can say about it. And I'm just going to start with really the thing that's going to attract you to the knife right away is the first time you open and close it, just how smooth this knife is to open and to close. It is a great fidget knife. If you're somebody who likes fidget knives, this thing is just so much fun to open and close. It flies open, no problems there. Um, I did actually just oil it up a little bit um, before the review, but it's the first time I've ever done it. And I've had this knife forever and it really didn't make much of a difference. This thing just flies open regardless. Um, but I've not had any problems with that. Super smooth to open, super smooth to close. And the closing is really due to the lock system that Spyderco uses here. They actually have a patent on this lock system, I believe it's their compression lock. Um, I think that patent actually might've just expired like last year, um, but I, I'm not aware of anybody else who comes out with knives with a compression lock yet. Uh, the only time you ever see compression locks is on Chinese knockoffs of Spyderco's that they're actually trying to pass themselves off as a legitimate Spyderco. Um, they have the same emblems and everything, and, and it literally, they, they try to make you think it's a Spyderco. They do have the compression lock, obviously, because they want you to think it's the real thing. Um, but I, I stay away from knockoffs like that. I don't try to buy anything that tries to pass itself off as the genuine article, just because you can get it cheaper. Obviously, you're not going to get the same quality, and you don't I don't want to support anybody who is doing something like that. Now, um, if somebody else has a design that is similar, but are not claiming it to be the genuine article, you know, that's a little different story. Um, I might consider that depending on the situation, just to test out a knife style and see if I like that knife style. But I will say with the paramilitary too, I, I just think the minute you, you put one of these in your hand, you're going to love it. Um, as far as kind of going back to the blade itself, the CPM S110V. So this is considered a super steel or a premium steel. Um, it is extremely hard blade material. Th this is something that 
once you get an edge on it, it's going to hold that edge for a very long time. Um, the only downside to that is it is also very hard to sharpen because of that. Um, in fact, that leads me to kind of the story. If you've noticed here, you can kind of see as the light hits this thing, you're probably seeing these marks that are going across the blade, uh, kind of scratches that I have going lengthwise across the blade. Basically, that occurred because after doing a test on my knives to see how long um, they would hold an edge, which was just cutting tons of cardboard, and this thing lasted forever. This was a couple years ago that I did this. Um, I decided to resharpen it, and because of how hard this was to sharpen, I decided to use the Work Sharp sharpener, which if you're familiar with, is kind of a belt grinder type sharpener system. And it's great for putting a very quick, very polished, fine edge on a knife um, with without having to spend a lot of time. But the way that thing works is you pull it through a channel and the, the spinning um, uh, brace of belt actually puts the edge on it. Well, as it's grinding on the knife edge, it's kicking up that metal, those metal shavings or grindings, and they get in that track. And so as you're pulling it through the track, that metal dust is actually scratching the blade all up. And so that drives me crazy just seeing that on the blade like that. So I've actually considered maybe taking this blade off and refinishing it, doing like maybe a stone wash finish or something on it. The only thing that's kept me from doing it is I don't really want to lose that Spyderco etched emblem there logo. So I haven't done that yet, but if I ever do that, I might do an update to the video to show you guys what that looks like, because really those scratches just drive me crazy since this is not a knife that I use as a heavy work knife. Now, the reason I don't use this as a heavy work knife is because the blade type itself, the shape, you can see how narrow this thing gets toward the point. Um, very thin at the point in both directions. It's a very fine point. It's kind of needle-like, if you will, um, which is great for certain options. And definitely when you're doing like slicing, you know, fine slicing or cutting, this thing is a great slicing knife. But it's not a knife that you're going to want to use heavily or any way abusively. Any kind of real heavy cutting or chopping type tasks, anything that you might get some lateral stresses on that blade, especially with that CPM S110V, you're not going to want to do that because I mentioned how hard this blade is to sharpen and how well it holds an edge. Um, it does all that because it, you know, it's, it's got that higher uh, or harder steel, but that also makes it a little more brittle. So it's not a tough blade. So with blades, you basically have kind of four qualities you look, look at in a knife steel. You know, you're looking for how, how long it'll hold an edge. It's wear resistance, how long it'll hold an edge. Um, how easily it'll take an edge, how easy it is to sharpen. You're also going to be looking for toughness, which is the opposite of like brittleness. That is uh, how well the knife can handle forces and stresses without cracking, chipping, or breaking. Um, and then you're also looking at corrosion resistance. Well, I think in two categories, this knife does really well. Um, first of all, uh, edge retention, our wear resistance. This knife is phenomenal. It holds an edge for a very long time. Um, so it does well in that category. And I've also just personally noticed that it does really well in uh, corrosion resistance. I haven't had any issues with this knife as far as um, any kind of, you know, rust spots or anything like that on it. And I haven't really babied it to try and keep it, you know, dry and, and things like that. I, obviously, I don't leave it out in the rain, but I, I would say it does good in both those categories. What it doesn't do so well in is really the other two. Sharp, uh, how easy it is to sharpen, this thing is a bear to sharpen. And then also it is more prone to chipping because it is a more brittle type steel. So you gotta know what it is and use it accordingly um, based on the steel you have in the blade. That being said, um, you know, this knife is just, I have nothing bad to say about it. I honestly was, this is only the second Spider Co that I, I have ever, that I ever bought. Um, wasn't ever a big Spider Spider Co fan. I didn't really like the thumb hole. I think that was a big part of my thing. I was used to thumb studs. I didn't like the hole, but are are you know not necessarily even a thumb hole. I guess they call it the Spidey hole. But um, with this knife, I mean, it just opens so easily. Now I've gotten to where I'm I'm so not used to using my thumb. You can open it with your thumb, and with a little practice, you know, it it does it really well. But I've gotten so used to doing that spidey flick where you just flick it out with your finger that that is how I open this knife. And it just, just feels so good in the hand to do that. Um, the compression lock, the way that thing drops. So, I mean, that's this compression lock is just definitely become one of my favorite locks because of the way that it, it works. You can see there's actually 
I don't know if I'm going to get the focus on this well or not. I'll try to keep it down here so you can see it. There's a channel cut into the blade itself, kind of a, at an angle there on the back of the blade. What happens is as this rotates, this flat part of the blade here is going to butt up against the stop pen. And then that liner in there is going to flick open into that channel in the blade. And so what it does is it actually wedges that liner between the stop pen and the blade itself, that notch in the blade. And that's where the name compression lock comes in because if you try to close this thing, what it's doing is it's actually compressing or trying to compress that liner, which obviously is very difficult, if not near impossible to do. So it actually provides an extremely secure lockup. Um, this compression lock is just awesome. And I've gotten to where I really like them. They, they feel similar to a liner lock and a lot of people just compare them to a liner lock on the back of the knife, but that's just not really the case. Uh, it's just so much more secure, uh, a much safer lockup than a liner lock. A liner lock, you know, which is on this side, is basically just something that kind of slides over to the middle of the blade. But if you put a lot of pressure, like a spine whack or something that's putting pressure on that blade, on a liner lock, it can tend to want to kind of push that out of the way and close, or it can even buckle where it'll actually bend the liner itself. But with a compression lock, it's trying to actually compress that liner from top and bottom and it's just not something that it can easily do. So it's a very secure lockup. The other thing that's nice about this is it allows you to shut the blade one-handed as well as open it one-handed. So when you sh want to shut that blade, you just depress that, that compression lock and the blade just shuts. It just falls shut and it keeps your hand completely out of the way, out of the path of that falling blade. So you don't have to worry about um, any danger of, of cutting yourself as you shut the knife. So, uh, in fact, that compression lock is you can actually flick the knife open and close based on just the compression lock itself. Now you can see there, it's so smooth that you, you kind of have to get the timing down uh, to flip it open and let go so that it latches. Otherwise you're looking at this thing just bouncing back and forth. Uh, but it is, you know, as loose as that blade looks when you do that, how it just flies open and close like that, there is absolutely no play whatsoever in the blade itself. I mean, this thing is super tight lock up side to side, no blade play at all. Um, and yet super smooth to open, which is, is kind of a rarity. Usually if it's that smooth on the open, you're going to have a little bit of, of slop there. You're going to have a little bit of blade play, and you just don't have that with this knife. Um, I think maybe that's one of the things that you can kind of say tries to justify the price point. So this knife right now, if you were to look to pick up this knife, um, it, the MSRP on this is $308, but you can actually pick it up online right now for about $215. Now, $215 is a lot of money for a knife for, for most people. Uh, most people are going to look at a pocket knife and they're going to balk at $200. And, and that's understandable. Um, uh, you know, on the other hand, there are some, some you know, knife aficionados out there who wouldn't even blink at dropping $200 you know, on a knife. So I guess it's all what your disposable income is and you know, how much you're into knives and what you're willing to spend. Uh, so you kind of have to compare apples to apples on that. But for a $200 knife, if you're going to spend $200 on a knife, I just don't think you're going to find one that you'll be any happier with than the paramilitary too. It just, it feels so good in the hand. The fit and the finish on this thing is perfect. There's no hot spots. Everything fits right and tight. Um, super smooth. I've used this thing quite a bit. Um, and it feels just as good as the day I got it. Uh, it's got some wear on it. You know, it's not too bad though. I just, I, nothing but good things to say about the paramilitary too. So if you're, if you're comparing this uh, to other $200 knives, I think this thing has to be close to the top of the pack. Um, is it worth $200? Well, that's kind of subjective. Um, again, I think if you're going to spend $200 on a knife, you can't go wrong buying this one. If you want to save a little bit of money, you can get one with a different steel. Um, that's not going to run you quite as much, but it's still going to be an expensive knife. The paramilitary two is a good quality knife made here in the USA. Um, so you can see here, they have the golden Colorado USA earth on the, on the blade there. Um, you know, you're going to pay a little bit more for that. Uh, but you're keeping it here in the USA. Um, you know, you're not buying some Chinese steel knife that's manufactured over there. So you're going to pay a little bit more for that. You're paying more for the high quality, the fit, the finish. Um, you got good materials with the G10 and the good blade steel. Uh, so is it worth $200? If you can afford $200, I don't think you're going to regret it. That being said, if you're somebody who's just going out trying to buy a knife uh, and you want a good knife, uh, but you're kind of on a budget, 
do you have to spend $200 to get a good knife? I would say absolutely not. I mentioned that I did a cutting test with this thing on cardboard a couple years back. I did that test with this knife, with the S110V, uh, with a Spyderco Manix uh, 2 with S30V, and an Ontario Rat 1 with an OS 8 blade in it. And I got to tell you, all three of those knives just did an amazing job cutting cardboard. I cut so much cardboard. I was trying to cut it until it, it got difficult to cut, until the blades dulled enough that it, it would not cut the cardboard easily. And I did so much cutting that I actually had blisters on my hands. My hands were given out before the knives were. And that was all three of them. They all held up so well. And that Ontario Rat one impressed, impressed me to know in how well it hung in with these higher end steels. So the question is, you know, that Ontario Rat one is a $30 knife. This is a $200 knife. Is there a $170 difference in the quality of those two knives? I mean, honestly, no, there's not. I mean, there's no doubt that this Spyderco is a better knife than that Ontario Rat 1. Uh, but is it worth $170 more? You know, I, I again, that's subjective. That's going to be up to you. So all that being said, what are my thoughts on the Paramilitary 2? I love this knife. I think if you get one in your hands, if you've never held one, you're going to love this knife. The minute you flip it open and closed, I think you're going to fall in love with it. I introduced a cousin of mine to the paramilitary too, and he's got quite a few of them now. Um, I know he loves the knife. I just can't see anybody handling one of these and not falling in love with it. So that definitely is what turned me on to Spyderco. I wasn't a big Spyderco fan until I handled one of these knives, and now I have a few of them. I don't have a lot, but I do have a few. Um, so I just kind of wanted to do an overall review. I know there's a lot of reviews out there on paramilitary twos. I've probably said nothing that's new. Uh, but if you're somebody in the market looking at one and trying to decide, is it worth it or not? I'm just going to leave that up to you as far as the price point, but going to say, if you're planning on spending $200, you won't regret it. If you spend it on the paramilitary too, it's a great knife and I think you're going to love it.